Shalom is real. Most high and Christ blessed. Most high and Christ blessed. We have a treat for you today. Another class from Officer Simakaya. In his class, he's going over not being entangled in the world. And he's going to explore different things in which we, as repentant Israelites, can become entangled in the world. This is going to be a two part series. Neither part is either part that you want to miss. So stay tuned, Israel, as Officer Simakaya gives the sense according to the Bible. In the spirit of Christ, we're going to explore not being entangled in the ways of the world. All right, Shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ bless you. Enjoy the class. All right, so the title of the class is Be Not Entangled. Be not entangled. So we're going to start off with 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. This is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So we know that this is a letter from Paul written to Timothy. So he told Timothy to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Let's see what that grace is talking about. That Paul is instructing Timothy to be strong again. Get Titus 2 and 11. This is the book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So this is, so it's saying the grace of God that brings salvation. So this is going to let us know what that grace that Paul is talking about. In 2, Tim in 2 Timothy 2 and 1, it says, The grace of God that bringeth salvation. So the grace of God does bring salvation, but let's see what that is. Read. Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So for us to be under the grace of God, that grace of God is us keeping God's commandments. Right now, we are in that grace period. We are in the time frame that we have to get ourselves right so that we can get the kingdom when Christ come back. And we are very close to that time as we can see what's going on in the world. Uh, back to uh, Tim, first, second Timothy 2 and 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So now he's giving Timothy instructions on what he should be doing as he, has, as he was set up as a leader. He said, the things that you heard of me teach among many witnesses. Teach, teach. He said, the things that you heard of me among many witnesses commit to faithful men who will teach others also. What was Paul teaching Timothy? Go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 37. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So the things that Paul was written, not just in this in in Second Timothy, but all his all the letters of Paul, what Paul was writing was the commandments of God. So what he was instructing Timothy to do was, as I, as I taught you the commandments among many witnesses, you do the same thing to the men that that you that you're building up after you. Uh, back to Second Timothy chapter two and three. Second Timothy chapter two and verse three. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So now he's letting Timothy know, <clears throat> as you are, as you are building up men in the commandments. Build. It says endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So you men got to recognize and understand that. We are soldiers in the Most High Army. As we are being wake, awoken up in this time, realizing and understanding that we are the Israelites, we are the soldiers of the Most High. So it says, endure hardness. What in hardness is he referring to? Go to jump over to 4 and verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So he's letting Timothy know that as he is doing the work of the Most High, there's going to be things that get in the way, that try to get in the way. It's going to be people that's going to be uh, 
there's going to be people that's going to afflict them, whether it be from family, the things that's going on around them, people that he teaching. It's going to be afflictions that he's going to go through, whether it be from the government. It's going to be various afflictions that Timothy had to go through. But he told them, endure hardness, meaning no matter what come up against you, no matter how hard it get, no matter how hard it seems, continue to push because you're a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Read. Second Timothy chapter two and verse four. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. So it says, no man that wars. And it says no man. We know that the Bible, even, even with the previous verse where it says soldier, we know that the Bible is written in a masculine form. So these scriptures that we've written, this applies to the sisters as well. So no man that wore entangled himself with the affairs of this life. The many affairs of this, the many affairs of this life, many things that go on. But as we read through the scriptures, as we are building ourselves up and, and learning this Bible, we are at war. And there's many things that's going to come and try to entangle us, distract us. And many of those things, it could be, it could be our worldly family. It could be work. It could be bills. Could be things that's going on in the world. All of those things are distraction. But and the instruction is that no man that wars, meaning no man that actually is in this fight of keeping the keeping the commandments in the midst of a, a wicked and perverse world, no man that is in this war allows himself to get entangled with the affairs of this life. It says that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So the most high chose each and every one of us to be in this walk. So our, our, our way of pleasing him is actually doing and keeping the commandments as it is written. Now let's go to, uh, no, go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 3. Because it says no man that wars. What type of war are we in? Are we going to go and get, go and stock up on guns, get some, get some uh, AK-14s and, and all that to war, war in this battle? First Corinthians 10 and start at verse 3. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So the Bible says that even though we are walking, we are walking this walk and we in the flesh, we know that's not how we wage war in this battle. We are waking up, nor realizing, understanding that we are the Israelites and we got to keep the commandments. Read. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So the weapons of our warfare is this here. It's the Bible. It's the Bible that we read, that we should be reading every day and studying, getting ourselves right, examining ourselves. This is the war that we fighting. Read. Verse five, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we, as we are in this war, the war first start with us. As we first come in, the, the, we first got to we first got to pull down the strong holes in our own man. We got to first cast down the imaginations in our own man. And that's whether you, whether you came from a, a, a background of going to the Christian church whether you came from a background of gang banging, being in the streets, whether you came from a background, uh, whatever background you may have come from, now in this, now you are in this truth. You have to cast down the imaginations with what? The Bible. You have to renew your mind. You have to actually examine yourself and see is what you're doing lining up with the scriptures. Is what you're doing, the things that you did in the past, you have to change them things and actually change them now to uh, to uh, fall in line with the Holy Bible. Read. Verse 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So it starts with us. And then once we get ourselves right, then we got to go to our people and get our people right. All right, let's go from there. Go to 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 18. Second Peter chapter two and verse eighteen. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity. Uh read verse one real quick. Second Peter chapter two and verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily 
shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So just read, I just read verse one so we see what Paul is addressing in this, well not Paul, but Peter is addressing in his letter. He said, there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. So then, jump to 18. Verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. So he said they speak great swelling words of vanity. Vanity is things that uh, things, words that are spoken to no profit is not going to profit you anything as it relates to you getting the kingdom. It says they allure through the lust of the flesh. Allure, it's, it's pretty much like a motivational speaker. Mainly what we know, we know the Christian pastors is this. This is what they do. They speak great swelling words. They speak uh, lovely songs like the scriptures say. But what, they, what they're teaching is not conducive to us being Israelites. It says, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from those, from them who live in error. I mean, that's the things that they speak. This is the Christian pastors, and even this whole world is under the guise of Christianity. I don't care if somebody say they, they are Muslim, they, whatever religion, if, if you, whatever religion people say they are, when you actually sit down and talk to them, they still live in, in the, um, the doctrine of Christianity because they all say the same thing. They all, all talk, all say that all nations can be saved. They all say the same thing and they, they have the same traits. Read on. Verse 19. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same as he bought in bondage. So it says they are the servants of corruption. In other words, they are servants of death, meaning if you allow yourself to be um, deceived and, you, and go back into what they what they talking about, what they teaching, you are you are going back into being a servant of death. Read verse twenty. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So now. We have us here. We everybody that's listed that's on the class, everybody that's in this truth, you have escaped the pollutions of the world because you have come to know that you are an Israelite and you got to keep God's commandments. We we now recognize that the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans fit the curses that's in Deuteronomy twenty eight, and we are the Israelites. So we have escaped that pollution. So it says, if they are again entangled therein and overcome, meaning if you entangled with. Your, that old man, that old woman, if you entangled with the things that you used to do, whether it was Christianity, whether it was the nation of Islam, whether it was being on a block game banging, smoking weed, selling drugs, uh, being a, a, a um, an adulterer, a fornicator, being in, engulfed in, in being engulfed in porn, all those things, you get entangled back in those things, it says the latter end is worse than than, than the beginning. So that means if you if you had let's say you you dealt with, you, you whatever you battle with whatever spirit you battle with it's gonna come back seven times more, like it tell us in the in the scriptures. The last the last state is gonna be worse. So it's very important for us that as we are in this truth that we keep ourselves grounded and rooted, especially in this time with all these all the things that's going on. You got the the uh, pestilence that's in the world now. All this stuff that's going on in the world that we see is is more of the importance is now very high time that we actually get ourselves rooted and grounded in the keeping of God's commandments so that we don't get entangled with the things of the world. Um, get Hebrews 12 and one. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse one. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So it says, wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Jump up. That's the, those witnesses is talking about our forefathers. Let's jump up to chapter 11, read 38. 
Because when you read chapter through chapter 11, it basically talks about the faith of our forefathers. It talks about Abel, Enoch, David, Noah, Abraham. It goes through and tell, talk, tell us about things that they did. And then it ends off with this, 38. In verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. So it says God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. So now <clears throat> when, you, when you do go to 12 and 1, it says we are accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Talking about our forefathers. Talking about them that was named in verse 11. Uh, read after where it's, after where it's a, a, like a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So it says later lay aside every weight and the sin which so, was thus so easily beset us. We know every each and every one of us know our spirit. We know the things that can seduce us and pull us away from keeping the commandments. That's why it's, it's in, it says the sin which does so easily beset us. When we are tested and we are tempted, don't think that um, it's not known that, the, 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 that Satan don't know what uh, allure us and pull us away. It's, it easily beset us only if we are not meditating on the scriptures to combat those sins. We have to be able to, if you were, if you was a Christian, if you was in the Christian church before you came into the truth, in Christianity, in Christianity they had this, they they have this belief, uh, God loves everybody. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Basically, you can't correct me. If if you came out of Christianity now, being in this truth, you have to study the scriptures that deal with. Uh, correction, receiving correction, because you can be corrected. You have to deal with study the scriptures that show that no, God ain't for everybody. He didn't come for everybody. He came for only the Israelites. You have to meditate on those things. If you came from the streets where you was shooting and killing and robbing people, you have to study scriptures dealing with hatred. So that you can change your thought process to now keep God's commandments, to actually love your people as you're supposed to, meaning correct and teaching the commandments. So move. So now it says the back to Second Timothy real quick. Second Timothy, read two and verse four. I think it is. Second Timothy chapter two and verse four. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. That's all. That's all I want. That part. So no man that warreth entangled himself. So we are as we are in this truth. It's it's very important that we keep ourselves rooted in the scriptures, so that we don't get entangled with the affairs of the life. I'm gonna deal with four of those uh, affairs that could that could possibly get you entangled up as you are walking in this truth. The four is family, your family, your old, your worldly family slash friends could possibly get you entangled back into that old man. Work, you can get entangled with work, a news or the things that's going on in the world. You can get entangled up in that, and then bills. We'll start with family. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 13 and six. Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse 6. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, lie unto thee, or far off from thee, from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. 
Thou shalt not consent to him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thy eye pity him, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterwards, the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he had sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So reading through all of this, let's say if, yo, if your, your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, anybody that is not keeping the commandments, it says they entice me secretly, let us say, let us go and serve other gods. And had you do those things, doing that is that is going back to that Christianity. If you got family that's in Christianity and they they trying to allure you, come back into that, or they when they talking to you, they trying to show you how what they doing is right, that's them that's in, that's enticing you secretly. Or even if you came from the streets, she's gang banging. That's entice. That's that's the, the, your friends or fan, whoever enticing you to try to get you to serve other gods. Because serving other gods is basically you breaking God's commandments. Because anything that's outside of you keeping God's commandments, you're serving another god. So whether if it's your son, you had a tight relationship with your son, and he he tried to uh, get you to do something, you have to be firm and um, have fortitude as it comes as it relates to the commandments. You can't allow that emotion because it's your brother or it's your it's your sister or it's your mother or father if they're not keeping god's commandments anything of course you of course you had you you're around them to a certain extent because how can they see your light if you're not around them if you don't if they don't see it but outside of that anything that, that goes against the commandments you got to cut it off you got to cut it short go to sirach chapter 27 12. sirach chapter 27 and verse 12. If thou be amongst the indiscreet, observe the time, but be continually among men of understanding. So it says, if you be, if you are among the indiscreet, though meaning those that's not keeping God's commandments, observe the time. Don't spend too much time with them, because if you spend too much time with them, those old emotions gonna start riling up, and they they they're not keeping the commandments. So that conversation is not gonna be at a commandment. It's, it's if you're around them for too long, or too much. They can possibly uh, seduce you. Their communication, the things that they're doing, it could possibly pull you back into that into that old man. I know, for example, for myself, when I first like the first couple years of being in the truth, I couldn't be around my mother. Every time I went around my mother, it, it was it was almost like it sucked the spirit out of me. It weakened my spirit. Where I, it was like I turned back into the a, a, a mama, a mama's boy, to the little boy, where I had to distance myself for a long time, where didn't I didn't even really speak to my mother for a while until I was able to go around and it didn't affect my spirit in that same way, where it put, like it's pulled like it pulled life up out of me, and whatever the situation, especially dealing with your family, whether it's a son, daughter, sister, brother, you have to be able to uh, set the boundary of limitation of how long you can be around that person and then you got to get in and get out uh read on verse 13 the discourse of fools is irksome and their sport is in the wantonness of sin so the, the, every, any anybody that's not keeping god's commandment what they talking about is irksome you hear and it's like oh god so that's more important you have to limit your time you can't be around them all day because it's going, it's going to affect your spirit. Go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. We can never get in a mindset thinking that, oh, I'm good. I'm studied up. I'm good. You go around them for too long, you mess around and, 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 and see yourself drifting backwards a little bit. Like I said, observe the time. Keep that time short. And it said, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. The scriptures don't lie. Evil communications will corrupt good manners. A lot of a lot of us, we is what in a, a lot of us in the world, whether it's been 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, may have been in the truth between two, I'll say between two to eight years, maybe some, maybe more. 
but we are in the process of getting out, of getting that stuff out of us, getting our minds right, getting that stuff out of our mind. A lot of stuff be in the deep, in the deep in the back of your mind, and sometimes you don't even know it's there. All right, and that concludes part one. Tune in for part two as we continue to explore this topic of be not entangled. Lord's will, you were edified, and I'll see you next time. Shalom, salute, most high Christ bless you. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.